Hey everyone, uh, let's do some level one op art. Op art is short for optical art, which the artist uses the idea of optical illusions to kind of um, mess with the way you perceive things in the picture. So there are some things that you can do with two-dimensional drawing that um, sort of make things look sort of three-dimensional and also kind of letting the different sorts of colors move together and creates an interesting optical effect with these optical illusions. Um, so op art is the phrase that art historians kind of use to describe artwork that uses these kinds of ideas. So um, some artists that you might think of, uh, one person who's kind of well known for some things that aren't exactly op art, but are um, these impossible constructions is uh, M.C. Escher, and he uses this idea that doing things in a two-dimensional space like a drawing and making them look somewhat three-dimensional, uh, you can create these impossible things like the people kind of walking up and down the stairs or having different vanishing points and viewpoints all over the place. So it's kind of a cool place to uh, check out a website or Google MC Escher and look at some of these impossible constructions. It's an interesting type of drawing um, and kind of um, mess with the way you look at the world and the perspective on these drawings. Things that wouldn't be possible, but that look correct at a first glance, but the closer you look and then you think about it, they're actually not going to work. Um, one of the artists that's probably mentioned most of the time when we talk about op art is Victor Vassarelli. And uh, the Art Story is kind of a cool website where you can go and, and look and read a little bit about artists and see how they have created art over the course of their lifetime and you can scroll through there. Uh, this one kind of uh, is the one that we're going to take some inspiration for for the project that we're going to do today. So uh, Vega 3. Uh, so it uses the idea of this checkerboard grid and then plays with the idea of pushing and pulling the space a little bit. Um, we're not going to do something exactly like this. We're going to kind of simplify it a little bit and go to something that's a little closer to what we will call level one op art. So let's go over to the table and take a look at that. Alright, cool. So here's a couple of finished examples of what we can do with this technique. Um, and so what we're going to do is draw a grid on our paper and then add a shape to it and then by coloring in in a pattern we'll let the actual shape that we draw there somewhat be revealed but also somewhat be hidden because of the way we do the pattern. So first thing I'm going to do is slide those aside and we'll cut some paper. I did these examples on about five inch squares, but you could do them any size you want. Bigger might be take a little bit more time, but it would still uh, work a similar way. So, and they don't even really have to be square. One, two, three, four, five. But for time, five inch piece will do pretty well. So. We'll go with that. One, two, three, four, five. And there. They could be any shape you want. They don't have to be square. They could be rectangular. But we'll start with a five inch square. And then we'll go from there. So what you need is some kind of straight edge. You can use a ruler 
and you can keep the lines uh, just straight like I did there. Uh, if you can't find a ruler, or if you want to do something a little more interesting, then grab a cereal box or something that's laying around and tear off a part of that. Okay? And then you can use your scissors to change the shape. So I can use that as my straight edge there if I want to. Um, and we can just do a basic grid across here for now. Okay. If you do the grid smaller and put the lines closer together, you'll have more detail. But for more of a simple design, space them out a little bit more. And I think that'll be the way to start out. <clears throat> if you're just doing this for the first time, that's more what we're looking for. The other thing you can do is cut the shape into the cardboard so it's got some curves in it and then you don't necessarily have to have a straight line grid you can have some curve to it or some movement to the grid and then as you do some of the maybe higher level op art type of things you can use the way that you make the grid lines to create more movement and make more three-dimensional shapes but for these examples here today we'll try <coughs> keeping it fairly simple okay so after you've got your grids drawn into place then pick a shape okay and it can be fairly simple just a circle is one way to start if you do a rectangle or a square in there, it can actually work out okay. But you want to make sure no matter what shape you do, that you're actually cutting through the middle of as many of the grids as you can. If you get your lines really close to the edges of where the grid lines are, then you'll lose your shape a little bit. Okay. In this example here, you can see we can see this part of the heart pretty well, but where this line kind of follows the actual grid line, you lose a little bit of the image of the heart a little bit, and it doesn't work quite as well. Okay, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut through as many of those shapes as I can. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical, but it does help with a grid to make the shape pretty close to symmetrical. And then if you want to be a little more adventurous, you can do a letter or something like that. So I did an A for the example, so we'll try that out again here, and we'll put that into place. Cool, there we go. And then you'll see what the difference is between a shape that has a, a shape in the middle, a hole in the middle, versus one that's just like that. So then what you're going to do is choose some colors. You don't want to choose colors that are too close together because it'll make it a little harder to see. Okay? This example shows kind of what happens if you've got colors that are really close together and it was really hard to see the cross shape that we made, so we just kind of traced around it to cheat a little bit. But uh, having colors that are have a little more contrasting is a good way to keep that problem from happening. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna color in the grid, and we're going to just color the outside of the shape at first. So you can use crayons or color pencils. I use color pencils for most of those examples. Probably the benefit of a color pencil is you can keep the point of it a little sharper and then you can be a little more detailed. So we're gonna go blue, white, blue, white, blue across there. I'm not gonna color inside of the shape at all right now, okay? And then I've thinking about this checkerboard pattern, I need the shapes to be 
colored diagonally from each other. So then I would color that piece diagonal, okay? I'm not gonna do anything in here in the middle right now. That would be white, okay? The small place would be blue. You can see with the crayon, it makes it a little tricky to get into those spaces. So I'm gonna go blue here, okay? So this isn't a bad project for older kids to do on their own. If you have younger ones, then you might need to kind of slow down um, and help them out a little bit. So instead of having them just go ahead and color it, maybe you would outline the shape for them and then have them practice coloring in the shape instead of um, having to make the decision themselves. So that can help them kind of adapt that. Um, and then they're practicing coloring and staying in the lines, which is a good skill. Okay. And kind of paying attention to what they're doing. But you could go through and get everything lined out for them as well. So that's the way that that one would work. If you have erasable color pencils, that might be nice. Uh, usually, I don't recommend those too much, but on this, where you might make a mistake with your coloring, having an erasable pencil might be a good place to start. So um, let me color through these a little bit more. I'll press pause here for a moment, and then I'll come back when I'm ready to start working on the center of the shapes. All right, cool, we're back. See, that was no time for you, but I've been working for a little while. So I think I'm ready to start working on the center sections now. So here's where you have to think a little bit. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. And what you want to do is flip the pattern. So where this shape right here, for example, would have been all blue, it's going to be white. And so that means that this one here above it is going to be the blue one inside of the pattern. So the pattern flips and then we go white and blue. And if we did everything right, it should work out that this section here should stay white and white and that works out okay so this is all white so this should be now blue and then it's going to be white here and blue here so it's still a checkerboard pattern but the pattern just reverses any time that another line cuts through the grid so there's white and blue. So this is white on this side and blue on this side. And you can see, so now the crayons make it a little trickier because they're just not super sharp. But if you have a crayon sharpener, you can work that out. Okay, and then that little tiny piece would be blue there. Okay, this small section would be blue. Okay, and so this is white. This should be blue and the other half would be white. This will be blue. So just pay close attention as you're making those and hopefully you won't make any mistakes and hopefully I wouldn't make any mistakes either. So then we've got this is blue and those sections are white next to them so I think We've got that heart mostly taken care of, okay? So you can kind of see that the, the heart is still there, but it's starting to fade a little bit. Ooh, there's a spot there we want to fix, okay? So it's a little more difficult to see, okay? Just at first glance, okay? If you keep it color and white, it works, okay? A little bit, but I think generally, 
the shape gets hidden a little bit more when you put some more color into it and um, that keeps the illusion working a little bit more. So let me work a little bit more on the A here and then I'll come back and show you what's going to happen with that center section there. You might have already been able to figure it out. All right, here we are. We're back one more time. So we've got the purple inside of the A colored in. And then the center section, everything just flips back again to the original pattern. Probably we could have just colored it as we were coloring the outside, but sometimes it's better to wait just so you don't get confused. Um, but still, any time that that cuts through one of the grid squares, that pattern is going to flip. So you're going to color that piece in there. So as that flips, then this will work. Okay. So that's really all there is to it. The only thing we have left to do is decide if we're going to take another color and color everything else in. And so we can do that. We'll add the, the contrasting color there and try that out and see what we get. And then we'll come back and show you the finished one. If you're really brave after you've done it with your color pencils or your crayons, get your markers out and try it with the marker. Um, you got to be careful because once you make a mark with a marker, it's not coming back. Um, sometimes you can get away with a little bit with a crayon. So let's pause one more time. We'll come back when they're all finished and take a look at them and see how they've turned out. All right, so now we've finished up again. I've been working, you guys didn't have to wait very long. So I picked a couple of darker colors for the A, which allows me to hide the pencil lines a little bit better. If you really want to hide those pencil lines, just put those pencil lines in there as lightly as possible when you do your drawing at the beginning. Um, but when those lines are hidden a little bit more then the shape is a little bit more difficult to make out so it depends on if you want that shape to kind of pop out and be easily seen or if you want to make people work for it so to speak and look a little bit closer to figure out exactly what's going on there because most of the time at first glance they may think oh it's just a grid pattern but there will be something that will attract their attention to the fact that it's not quite what it's supposed to be. And that's the idea of op art, is to work on that idea of the way we perceive things. So that's it, give it a try. Um, try some different shapes. Uh, try a whole series if you get into it. Do your whole name, not just one letter, but you know, make a word or something. Um, work together as a family and make several of them to spell out something. There's a few different things you can do, so. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you guys again, and we'll do some more art next time. All right, later.